it's really wonderful to have the opportunity to sit and have a talk about, you know, the creation of Kamalaya. Um, we both get asked so frequently by our guests, by people we meet around the world, but we don't often have the chance to answer that question together. And so at this time, uh, I'd love to hear from you and what you would share with me now in our 11th year. Um, well, I think everything begins with 25 years in the Himalayas. 16 years, you know, living as a yogi monk, as a disciple of a great Himalayan master. At first I lived in a cave. I lived on the side of a river, you know, a half a day's walk from the nearest town, from the nearest road actually, a day's walk from the nearest town. And, uh, uh, you know, we had no infrastructure, no electricity, completely off the grid. Quite, really quite amazing. And during those years we worked. We built accommodation, we built uh, stables for the animals, both horses and cows. And, uh, and we did all of this with our hands, with iron bars, with steel trays to carry the, the, the pebbles and the, and the earth. And uh, we had no machinery. It seemed absolutely impossible. Mm. But with patience and time, it all came together. Mm. And um, I think that really informed my life. That and Babaji's teachings of Karma Yoga, which is conscious action as a path of transformation, and his teachings of truth, simplicity, and love as service to humanity. It was during this time um, that Babaji said to me, we was, I was moving a rock or something, and Babaji walked over to me and he said, here we don't wait for miracles, here we create them. Mm. That's everything, and you realize you can do anything in this, in this life. This first hand experience of really making things happen, the, the impossible possible. Yeah, and have the impossible possible and to have the patience to do it mm -hmm. and have the patience to wait. So it also gave me the courage to, to imagine anything. Mm -hmm. So that's a big foundation for how everything else came. Another thing that I remember we discussed because of the original experiences we had together is that Kamalaya was always meant to be a place um, to inspire uh, life enrichment. And when we decided to get married, I knew that my life would never be the same. But it was so much more profoundly changed than I could have ever imagined um, by the invitation, not just to get married, but to really create something in our lives with the richness of our life experience and of the time that we spend with our teacher. How did we want to to make a contribution based on what we had been given, in a positive contribution in other people's lives. And um, your background in, in, in spirituality and my background in healing seemed to be the perfect melding together in, in, uh, to create what has now become Kamalaya. But it was a journey, it was an ongoing conversation that, um, that happened in Nepal for those many years before we actually moved to Thailand. If we had had the money and the wherewithal to build a Kamalaya at the time that we got married, um, we wouldn't have had the time for all those conversations to really sort out and really, I, you know, I remember the, the coming to America the first time and you're suggesting that I went to a Western teacher um, for a short retreat and that profoundly affected me because it allowed me and taught me and it really inspired me in how to translate everything that I had learned into a Western context, mm -hmm. to understand that you don't have to be a yogi, you don't have to live in the Himalayas, you don't have to be in the forest, in the jungle, in a remote place. Um, that the essence of everything that we learned could be translated. Do you remember one of the things that, that um, you very much used to share with me uh, from the beginning that you appreciated so much about the time in the Himalayas was um, the process of letting go as one reached this destination in the jungles, the process of letting go of habits, letting go of um, structures, of ways of doing things as one left the city life and then perhaps one's country and went deeper and deeper into the jungle, just the location, it was a peeling away 
of um, old habits in order to arrive to a place to be receptive, receptive and open to something new, um, living in, as you described by the riverbed, waking up early in the morning and engaging in activities that would be so different perhaps than the routine back home for everyone that, that arrives there and how that informed some of the essential qualities that you wanted to have at Kamalaya that, that it would be an environment where the old habits and old ways of doing things could be set aside temporarily in order to immerse oneself in an entirely different ecosystem in order to learn, be inspired and receive something new, something different and from that place, from that receptive place then deciding once you would leave a place like Kamalaya or the jungles often in the Himalayas in India um, and then decide what you want to incorporate back um, but selectively and consciously bring things back into your life. I remember that daily. <clears throat> I remember that daily actually and I remember that when in the in the concept phase how important that was you know just that if you take somebody out if, if you if you nourish somebody and free them from their daily habits the 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 way they carry themselves through life and the way they protect themselves in life, dealing with the world out there, since we're in here right now, um, that automatically people start to make an inward journey. If you allow people to slow down and feel safe, then an inward journey is just automatic. It just happens. You don't have to teach it to anybody. It just happens. And that's one of the magic things that happens in Kamalaya. Mm -hmm.